I mean, to be fair, Chris is always planning some sort of crazy challenge, but this one sounded a little bit more extreme. Actually, now that I stop and think about it, having seen all the media that he put out this week, is just frankly ludicrous. You... <laughs> wow! You're absolute nutter. And I thought you couldn't get any more crazy. This is absolutely amazing and bonkers at the same time. A lot of the reason for doing this is to sort of hope, hopefully open up that discussion a bit more about mental health in men and women. But obviously I'm, I'm fundraising for November for this challenge for several reasons and how they've supported me with some problems I've had myself. But the, the hopefully doing this challenge will open up the opportunity for people to have discussions while we're repping up and down the hill. I think cycling is a great way to open up about your feelings and how you're coping with situations. I was ever confident, but I'm optimistic that with anything that I set myself out to do, that I'll give it my best shot and try and do it. But I genuinely don't know for this one. <laughs> I'm genuinely quite nervous. I don't know I don't know if it's doable, but there's there's literally only one way to find out and that's to try. Several people have called me mad att attempting it. But I mean there's only one way to find out, isn't there? If it's doable. So for anyone that doesn't know what Everesting is, it is riding up and down the same hill until you hit the elevation of Mount Everest, which is 8,848 meters. And you literally are repping that hill until you get to it. So I'm doing that for seven days, Monday to Sunday, making just short of 62,000 meters of climbing. I'm not naturally a climber. Like, it's, this is well out of my comfort zone in terms of what I'm good at on a bike. It was like just under 20 minutes up and I think four and a half down, which is okay. No, it's gonna be a case of survival. It's gonna get, it's gonna get grim. I know that much. This is a challenge you've been in its own right, is remembering what the hell to probably get out next. Because I've gone 700 metres. <laughs> That's a joke. One. You're up and down a hill 22 times, it thunderstormed. Everything's whipped. This three reps of um, just whipped. It was shit. The end. We were, we were hoping on day two we were going to be able to bounce back, treat it almost as a recovery day while still getting in the distance, but very early on we realised it just wasn't going to, going, to, going to work. The weather was still atrocious. Uh, the after effects of day one were definitely showing. Um, so we knew day two was, was going to be as hard, if not harder than day one. And it became a, a battle just to keep Chris going and keep the challenge alive. So I, just, I don't think people realise quite how much of a toll this kind of thing takes on your contact points. So, like your hands where they just yeah you're climbing you're trying to hold on to the bars and grip onto the bars but i'm struggling to do that at the moment today he looks like what i was expecting him to look like on day one he's basically had two really really horrible days and now today he's like 
himself again, but I just I, I can't imagine he's going to be able to catch it up because it's just he'd have to go too deep. I've done about 2,000 uh, meters with Chris this morning uh, of elevation, and he's got another 60,000 on top of that, and that's pretty wild, really. Um, couldn't imagine doing that myself. He was telling me that he got to the bottom of the climb and all of our hidden supplies had gone missing. Um, I raced up there to see if I could find out where they were or if someone had taken them, um, at which point there wasn't, they were nowhere to be seen. Someone had taken the food thinking it had been abandoned and donated it to the local food bank. Uh, and they very kindly got in touch with us and brought it back to us, so the disaster was averted. When Chris is out on the road on his own, he's not as energised as when there's people with him. Um, something that we had in the bag was Emily came up with this idea of using our cargo bike as a motivation wagon. Big speaker on the front, um, and we've gone up on the road a couple of times, blasted some tunes, uh, thrown some shapes at him, caused some noise, caused some chaos. Thankfully we're in the middle of nowhere so we're not disturbing people. Right, so never mind they're going to be worse. <laughs> yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trust a fart at this stage. No, right? I don't trust a fart at this stage. <laughs> We'll still be on the road sooner than yesterday. His mental strength is incredible and it's just so important to have that support network of people and the, some of the stories that he's hearing too, you know, how they've been affected by different issues and stuff and it's that that's why he's doing this and spurring him on to keep hurting because other people have hurt so much more in so many different ways as well that he's hurting to try and help those people. So yesterday was a full day in the turbo because it was 40 mile an hour gusts and raining all day, which is mentally very soul destroying. It was slow, like mentally really slow. We lost Josh, our youngest son, in 2016 to suicide. Um, so, you know, anyth anything that people do for any prevention of suicide or mental health that can help others, um, it means so much to us. And it was just, you know, the, the words and the feelings that we had, it's just, you know, you never want anybody else to go through that. Um, the people that, that do this, they don't understand how much love there is there for them. Um, when you're in a dark place, you don't see this. You don't see the love, you don't see the help, you don't see the support. Um, but it is there for them, it's just you have to look for it. I can't even imagine what's going through his head with the amount of pain that he must be going through at the moment. The weather is horrendous, so Chris is spending a little bit of time on the turbo today, we're splitting it up, um, just because not only does it get dangerous out there with the fog and everything, but the road is being resurfaced, so it's slippery. Um, so yeah, today is purely damage limitation and making sure he gets to the end without any big mishaps. He's back on the turbo, then more sleep, back on the turbo, more sleep. He's uh, uh, hanging on. <laughs> and definitely the sleep is the only thing that's keeping him going. One, two, three, four. Chris is on the turbo, riding on his bike. Raise the money for Movember, cause he is really nice. It looks just like a platypus, riding through the rain. Climb that height of Everest again, again and again.
<laughs> 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 <laughs>